and welcome back to Tommy's World. You already know it's your girl Tommy, and I am back with another video. In today's video, we will be talking about the top five things that I definitely will miss about living in Japan as well as the top five things that I definitely will not miss about living in Japan because on the day that I am filming this video it is literally exactly one month away from the day that I will be leaving Japan leaving my life behind here that I have created for the last four years and your girl is sentimental y'all know like I'm a sensitive gangster it's like <laughs> yeah that's why I decided to make this video because you guys know that I am pretty much different from a lot of the expats out here in Japan when it comes on to food taste and cultural preferences but before before we get into today's video, guys, I have to announce the sponsors of today's video and I am super excited because the sponsors of today's video is one of the most amazing luxury brands out there. You already know I'm talking about Teddy Blake. Guys, your girl is on the come up. Anyway, let me show you guys what I got from our sponsors of today's video. Mm. Oh. Can you guys see it? So Teddy Blake sent me my package in this really, really cute box. And once you kind of flip the top, then you have to open it up. And then inside of the box is my luxury handbag from Teddy Blake. Oh my God. Tan -tan -na -na. Tell me it is not just the most gorgeous thing you have ever seen. I love it. So for those of you who do not know who Teddy Blake is, they are one of those luxury brand companies that makes amazing handbags. They have a team of Italian designers pitched from well-known luxury brands that creates handbag designs for every style choice. And if you don't see the bag that you like on their website at teddyblake.com, don't worry because they release new collections every single month. Bro. So Teddy Blake's bags are made with premium Italian leather so you can enjoy that leather touch and that new leather smell. One of my personal favorite things about the Teddy Blake brand is that it is luxury that is priced for the modern day woman like me and you who are just starting off in life. You get something so perfect, so beautiful. Oh my god. But they are not as expensive as a lot of other brands even though they offer the same quality. So with Teddy Blake you enjoy luxury at a price that is affordable for you. If you want my personal favorite right now, then this is the Ava Croco Gold 14 inch in dark green. But you guys can go ahead and purchase any style that you want on their website at teddyblake.com and be assured that you will be getting luxury at an affordable price at all times. Anyway, let's get back to the video. So normally I like to split the video in like two different parts where I would talk about things that I will miss and things that I won't miss but today I decided to kind of integrate them so I will do one thing that I'll miss then one thing that I won't miss just to make sure the video doesn't get too heavy because I want you guys to be able to enjoy this even though I'm not really enjoying this moving out process it is driving me crazy but the reflection is enjoyable so I want you guys to enjoy this reflecting with me okay so let's begin <laughs> The first thing that I will definitely miss about living in Japan are convenience stores and I decided to group Daiso in with this topic. Now, if you have never been to a Japanese convenience store, child, you are missing out because Japanese convenience stores are just top notch. You can go to the convenience store to do literally anything. You can pay bills, you can buy a hot meal and they will literally heat up these hot meals 
in the convenience store for you as service. Literally anything you want are in these convenience stores. And I just cannot get over how convenient they are. Oh, I totally get where that comes from. But convenience stores in Japan are extremely convenient and I will definitely miss not being able to run to 7-Eleven, Lawson, or Family Mart. They are so convenient. I'm gonna miss convenience stores so much. And as I said, I wanted to group Daiso in with convenience stores because I had so many things I couldn't even pick a top five. It's so difficult. But Daiso is definitely one of those things that I will miss when I leave Japan. For those of you who don't know, Daiso is the Japanese equivalent of a dollar store, but child the things that are in daiso i'm not even sure how they can afford to sell them for a dollar because daiso seria and kandu are the three top dollar stores in japan and the things that they sell baby girl definitely should not be selling in a dollar store but i'm happy that they do because the quality is just really really good and then you know that with japan they have to sprinkle in that kawaii culture everything is just so cute and the dollar store is one of those places that i can actually take up whatever i want without even worrying about the price like i don't mean to brag but the dollar store really reminds me that i'm a baller okay we don't check prices there <laughs> so next we will talk about one thing that i definitely will not miss about living in japan <laughs> And that is the lack of privacy that is afforded to you as a guy kokujin or a foreigner. So this comes from almost every aspect of living in Japan as a foreigner because you really stand out, especially me, because I be walking around so fine. Like, look at me. <laughs> I stand out, right? So people are always trying to like touch you or talk to you and that is not really lack of privacy but I just wanted to throw that in there because I would love for everyone not to be in my personal space at all times. But one of the main ways that I have seen lack of privacy in Japan is normally in my work life because once one teacher knows something about you, everyone knows everything about you. And do you remember that huge jet application form that you have to fill out? When I was at my old school in Yamaguchi, I realized that they actually send these packets to the school. So like every teacher knows exactly what I wrote on my application form. Whether it was my medical history and stuff, they send the entire package to my school. So they knew exactly who was coming, I guess. But it felt like such a huge invasion of privacy for me. Because like I don't need every single teacher in the staff room to know all of my illnesses and all of the things that are wrong with me or not wrong with me it just felt really really invasive and that kind of happens a lot it happened to me again out here in Kobe when I was really really sick with my anemia I had to like sign up these forms and I had to give it to my vice principal for her to stamp off and she reads the documents to see what's wrong with you and stuff before she has to stamp off and me and her had a big falling out about it because I'm like you're not a doctor and there's no way you can help me I don't get why it's necessary for you to know my health condition at all times especially because i felt really uncomfortable around her so i'm like yeah we are not going to be doing this and so the board of education did agree with me that she didn't need to know it but then everyone in the board of education knows what's wrong with me because i had to like have a meeting with the head of the board of education and of course they're gonna tell everyone because people talk i guess i don't know but it's so invasive to me like I will not miss not having privacy. I can't wait to just blend into a crowd again and just be a nobody. Okay, so point number three. The food. Child. Now, y'all know I don't mess with that sashimi and sushi stuff. I don't do the raw meat. But even for me, who's pretty much a very picky eater here in Japan, there are some things that I will definitely miss. Let's talk about the ramen. You have not eaten ramen if you have never eaten ramen from one of those rundown ramen restaurants here in Japan. You don't need to go to like a top-notch ramen restaurant to get good ramen. Anywhere you get ramen, it's gonna be 
delicioso. Thank you, Dora the Explorer. Also, <laughs> why am I fighting with y'all? I'm just really passionate about food, okay? Next, let's talk about that steak, which is basically Kobe beef. I didn't even know that beef had different tastes because I've always been poor, so I didn't get the good stuff. But once you go good, you can never go back to the food. I'm still gonna eat mackerel and rice because mwah, and I'm still gonna eat chicken back with my aki because mwah, but that Kobe beef, it be hitting different every time. Also, katsudon, I don't even wanna say what it is because I'm an Adventist and I probably shouldn't be eating that, but child. Bomb. Oyakudon, which is like fried chicken with a little bit of fried egg over it. I didn't even know that you could like egg this much. It's delicious. Anyway, point number four. I definitely will not miss being illiterate. When I was back home in Jamaica, I was never like an A plus student or anything, but I did well for myself. Like I could go into any room and have a conversation with literally anyone about anything also i used to love reading writing everything like that then i came to japan a country where something inside my mind told me you don't need to know japanese to move here big mistake bro big mistake i came to the country and like as soon as i went out into the streets of tokyo overwhelmed them overwhelmed them child i'm looking around at the sites and i'm like okay so yeah i don't understand what's happening and initially it didn't really bother me actually it really didn't start bothering me until i was getting leaflets on my desk from other teachers about stuff that was happening in the school and i'm like oh yeah don't understand i couldn't make like personal connections with my students which is very important to me it was difficult to make friends because i can't speak japanese so even if i did like go out of my way to speak to other japanese people it was always the mundane conversations like it's so hot or in winter it's so cold or hello and it's like okay i can speak a little bit of japanese but you can't make deep connections when you can only speak that much japanese you know what let's move on to point number five and this is on the happier side of things cleanliness no, if you have ever been in Japan, then you know. So I'm not saying that there aren't enigmas, but that is the point. Seeing a piece of garbage on the side of the road is surprising to you. You're like, what is that doing there? It's out of place. I will go to the toilet at any Japanese rest stop anywhere across the country, and I know that it's going to be clean. No matter how old it is, if it's a squat toilet, if it's one of the Japanese hype top-notch toilets, it's gonna be clean. You rarely ever see trash on the road, and I know you guys have seen those pictures where they have like the codfish swimming in the gullies. Normally, like if this was Jamaica, it would just be dirty water and a lot of trash running through those. But I definitely will miss how clean Japan is, and I know that I'm gonna go back home and I'm gonna be all judgy. I'm gonna be like, Ugh, why don't you guys pick up the garbage? Can't you guys keep the toilets clean? Like, I've been living here for so long. Toilets back home are gonna creep me out. I just know it. Anyway, point number six. Shopping. One thing that I definitely will not miss is shopping. And I have spoken about my challenges with shopping in Japan several times. But I am seriously looking forward to just being able to go into a store, pick up a shirt, put it on, and have it fit. That is just all I want in life. I just want to be able to go shopping. Can you imagine like already being in a bad mood? And then you go shopping just to like dress up and feel beautiful and nothing fits bro i'm not saying that the stuff in japan are not extremely gorgeous because if they could fit me my style would be a lot different because i've been looking at these kawaii culture girls and they be fine as hell and i want to dress like that but nothing fits me here so when it comes down to shopping for clothes shoes hair products 
I will not miss how inaccessible those things were to me here in Japan. I can't even imagine just being able to walk into a store and pick up some foundation that actually fits my skin and wearing makeup as much as I want without worrying about how I'm gonna get more if I finish it. And going to the hairdresser to get my hair done and my nails and coming out like a body. <sighs> Bro, going home is gonna be so therapeutic. Point number seven. <laughs> The safety. One thing that I will definitely miss about living in Japan as a woman in particular is how safe I feel here. I have heard my friends talk about going walking at like 12 p.m. at night. Cha, I don't be doing that. But I can only recall maybe two times where I have felt unsafe here in Japan. And one time out of the two was definitely a misunderstanding. The second time, I probably shouldn't just be going on dates with random people from Tinder. But that's a story for another time. But in Japan, I personally have felt really, really safe. And I will definitely miss that feeling. Anyway, point number eight. I will definitely not miss never being able to fit anywhere in Japan. Like when you go on the buses, my legs don't fit behind the seats because the space behind the seat is so small that I literally cannot fit my body into there. Emotional, damn it! My house, I have shown you guys how it's like really low, so my head is always hitting on things in my apartment. Emotional, damn it! I cannot fit in the bathtub that is in my house. Like, if I sit in the bathtub, my body literally has to be like my knees up to my chest like this. Emotional, damn it! And I just want to be able to take a bath with a bath bomb from Lush and feel plush. But no, because Japan doesn't appreciate my gorgeous size, I can't do simple things like that. So I definitely will not miss how small everything is. I just want bigger spaces, please. That is all I have to say about this. So let's move on to number nine. <laughs> definitely miss the kawaii culture here in Japan. I love how everyone gets dressed up all cute, how everything is made to just be a little bit more cute than it normally is. I just love looking at all the kawaii things. Like there's no way to really describe it. Japan turns everything into something kawaii, something that you want to play with or look at or touch and that is one of the reasons why every time I go to Daiso I leave with 1000 yen worth of stuff at least that I do not need but the kawaii culture is definitely one of those things that I will miss about living in Japan and the last thing that I definitely will not miss about living in Japan is Japanese bureaucracy child child this will have its own personal video when i leave japan and i have recovered from some of the trauma but in japan you never really get anything done because of japanese bureaucracy for example when we have to get back our pension payments from japan they make it so difficult to understand anything and even the people who are supposed to know do not know like I went to the pension office and they were like, yeah, you can't get this form here. You have to go to another office to do it. And I'm like, child, but you in the pension office. But this is always how things are set up in Japan. They make everything way more difficult than it has to be. So you always feel really, really bad, even if it's just the smallest thing that you did wrong. I don't know. I can't really put my finger on a perfect explanation. You just have to have been here and have experienced it to actually understand what I'm talking about. But Japanese bureaucracy is one of those things that I definitely will not miss. Anyway, we are at the end of this video, but I do have some honorable mention. I will not miss Japanese cicadas in the summer. They are so loud for what? Just... Another honorable mention is 
my job as an ALT. I will both really, really miss my job and really, really not miss my job at the same time because I will be going back into teaching once I go home and I definitely will miss the amount of downtime I have here as an ALT for the pay that I get because now I don't do things like take the register, I don't have a form class, I'm not in charge of students. So I'll definitely miss how little I have to do but at the same time I won't miss how little I have to do because a lot of the time it gets really really boring and a lot of the time working with other teachers gets so difficult because there are so many teachers that you have to work with to get stuff done and it's just so difficult anyway guys that is the end of today's video please don't forget to like share and subscribe if you have anything that you want to add to this list feel free to go ahead and add it in the comments below thank you guys so much for watching this video and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys Mwah.